What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video, we're just going to kind of look back at some battle submissions I wasn't able to get to from this season, as I'm going to be honest, the final two weeks are, in my opinion, going to be really boring. We have Master League, we still, and then the uh, Catch Cup is what's going to be next week, and honestly, if anyone from Niantic is watching this, please, in future seasons, stick to having more variety at the end of the season instead of catch cup and master league it's just not ideal for someone who's going to be pushing but that doesn't mean we can't watch some really really fun battles that were submitted in this case this is going to be ultra league with a, a blizzard tentacruel and a galarian moltres so shout out to my tie 2308 for sharing these battles with us and let me know what you guys think all right, getting into the first battle, we have Runarigus versus S. Cavalier here on the lead. So we'll have to see how they decide to play this out. But honestly, Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball looking very good. And Sand Tomb as a shield bait. I'm really excited. I got a good Runarigus from trades with my local community members. Um, and I have a bit of candy for it as well. But I'm just waiting for the new season um, to see what updates happen, what shakeups there are in the meta before I pull the trigger to get myself a Runarigus. But Shadow Ball does land right there on the S Cavalier and able to just fully farm down. Watch out for the uh, the Runarigus. Now we will see a Sand Tomb come through. Again, big pressure here on shields because they did have enough energy for Shadow Ball, but the no shield there from uh, the uh, Scizor, and we will see the Drift Blim now come into the Tentacruel, and you guys gotta remember, Tentacruel does have access to Blizzard. I know most people are running Tentacruel with either Acid Spray, Acid Spray or Sludge Wave paired with Scald, but it does have access to Blizzard, and there it is. Boom! Down goes the Drift Blim right there, and that is looking to be a good game, very well played. There is still the Runarigus in the back. There is still the Galarian Moltres. And yeah, that's going to be a game over. So Tentacruel putting in some work right there. You love to see it. And Moltres, or Runarigus is just going to go ahead and come in and soak the charge moves. But yeah, Runarigus is one of those Pokemon where I think in both Great League and Ultra League, it is pretty strong. But honestly, I just want to wait for the new season. If you guys are in the same boat where you have some good Pokemon from this Halloween event, um, maybe don't pull the trigger right away on dust and resources until we see what the new season says. That way you guys can allocate your resources in the right direction. Because who knows, if it's the same style of update that we saw from last season, there, there could be a lot of new Pokemon that come into the meta that you guys want to try out. But Moltres is going to go ahead and take this one with the farm down and if i'm being honest i think the galarian moltres visually out of the three looks the best don't don't hate me i'm team instinct but i think visually the galarian moltres won it all right so we got tapu fini now here on the lead against the runer regis and this is kind of a tough matchup for them because they are taking super effective damage from water gun and surf here soon but thankfully shadow ball is going to put a lot of pressure right here and let's see if they get a shield they do get a shield right there, so maybe a swap out. Yeah, we do see a swap out now into the Moltres. So they have to watch out for Moonblast. I don't think there was enough energy here, but they're going to go ahead and shield. No, it was a Moonblast. It's really, I'm going to be honest, it's really hard to keep track of energy um, when you have this sped up and shout casting it. You guys know, but here it comes the Brave Bird. Will we see a shield? Yeah, we do see a shield. So all shields are down right now, which means Tentacruel with Blizzard. Honestly, not going to do too much against the Tapu Fini. But we don't know what's in the back as Magnet Bomb will let... Oh, that's a ton of damage. Down goes the Moltres. And Runarigus now is going to have to come in. Because Tentacruel still with Poison Jab can do very well against the Tapu Fini. And honestly, if there is something like a uh, um, Giratina Altered in the back, right? I think it's going to be game over. So they do go ahead and give up a shield there on the Techno Blast, the Ice Techno Blast, and they're going to load up on energy. Now swap out to Tentacruel and start loading up on energy as well. And it is a Giratina Altered in the back. Here we go. Unshielded. This is beautiful. This game is still going to be close though, because there is a Tapu Fini to deal with as Dragon Claw does land. How much damage is this Blizzard going to do? That is what we want to know. I don't think it's going to one shot though. Oh, okay, still a ton of damage right there, and they might just be able to farm down. This is going to be pretty dangerous. If Giratina Altered can get to two more Dragon Claws, 
um, the tentacle here will go down. So there's the first one. This is going to be extremely tight. They're going to go ahead and throw the energy though. And remember, there's still the Tapu Fini to deal with. They're looking to undercharge as well, but it does take out the Giratina Altered. We will see the Genesect come in. They're going to swap out into Runarigus and throw. Oh, they misclicked right there. I'm guessing this battler wanted to throw the Sand Tomb, which is really unfortunate because then they could have had a Shadow Ball here for, okay, they get to the Shadow Ball anyways, so that is still good. Let's see if the Tapu Fini is going to go down. No, it does hang on right there. So this is looking to be a good game as the Tapu Fini can land the Surf now. And I think Water Gun is going to beat the Poison Jab in this situation based on the health. Oh, it does just barely. So good game. I would say slight misclick right there, but either way, pretty fun one. All right, we got Runarigus now versus the Shadow Nidal Queen, and we see a swap out right away into Scizor right here. So here it comes the Night Slash, and this is what's tough. Scizor being very strong in Ultra League, I wouldn't say like meta dominant, but it has really nice coverage against the meta, especially if there are a lot of Ghost and Charmers. So Shadow Ball now going to be coming through. Can they get a shield? Yes, they can. So even shields right now, and they're going to look to swap to catch the charge move now, and this is likely going to be another night slash which means it will be resisted right there and with wing attack and ancient power things are looking very good here for the moltres um, to basically come out of this matchup with a good amount of energy and a potential boost as well as the x scissor will land for neutral damage they're going to go ahead and load up and go for ancient power now still does neutral damage in this situation and because of the increase to damage at the beginning of the season it should be enough to take it out no boost on the back end though now nido queen is going to be coming in so can they get to the brave bird in time yes they can this is huge getting the second shield from your opponent right here with a brave bird is essential and it lands no they didn't respect it as nido queen is near death right now and let's see it's not it's not dying pokemon don't die <laughs> they just go to the pokey center all right <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna see the earth power most likely come through yeah it is gonna be earth power right there and we do see a swap out now into crobat so it's gonna be the tentacruel now in this matchup they can easily go for scald yeah they're just gonna go straight for scald don't mess around with the blizzard right there as scald will still put in a lot of neutral damage as we can see the first no shield but this is gonna be a tough situation because it they have to successfully shield the shadow ball that is the big call right here, and they do. That is huge. Had that been a Poison Fang and then a Shadow Ball, it might have been game over. We're going to see them go for one more Scald. So this is still going to be a close one. Nidal Queen has a decent amount of energy, I believe. And they do get the final shield, so it might be able to take it. But let's see how this plays out. This is probably going to be another Shadow Ball right here as it is. Yep. Oh, okay. Maybe they undercharged it? Interesting, or just didn't do that much damage. So now this is going to give Runarigus some farm. The Nidal Queen comes in, but gets farmed down, and they should be able to go for the Shadow Ball to close this game out. So unfortunate right there, but thankfully, resisting poison jabs was huge there for Runarigus to take the end game, and that is going to be a good battle, very well played. I'm curious if that was an undercharge on Shadow Ball. I thought it would have done more damage. All right, so we got Giratina altered here on the lead. We will see a swap out into Drapion. So they're going to look to stay in and probably soak. Oh, no, they're going to go ahead and shield. All right, they need to be going for Sand Tombs right here. Apply that debuff, do that super effective damage, and then they're going to need to bail out. So they're going to actually going to go ahead and just go straight into Tentacruel, not throwing the Sand Tombs. So now this is still going to be a tough situation as Tentacruel is going to have to land Scalds in order to take this one as Drapion is very far ahead on energy, which is going to make up for the lack of health because now they are even on health, but Drapion is going to be outpacing to charge move. So we will see the second Crunch land. And now are they just going to go for the... Oh, I thought they were just going to go for the Blizzard and one-shot Drapion. But Scald now coming through, and let's see if they can get a shield. They do get a shield right there, so that is great. Now they're going to hopefully get to a second one. But here comes a Crunch. Can they survive? I Oh, it's going to be... I think they don't survive the Crunch. No, they do! Barely able to hang on and able to get another Scald right here. This is perfect. Usually I, I call that correctly, but... 
My bad, Drapion now actually going to be able to farm down, and now this is a very tough situation. They're going to go ahead and come in with Moltres, and we see an instant swap out back into Giratina Altered, so this is where Runa Regis can really put in some work with Shield Baits with Santum, but a no shield there from the Giratina Altered. They're going to go ahead and go for Shadow Ball now, looking to force that final shield from the opponent. If it lands, I think it one-shots. It lands! Boom! Nearly one-shotting right there, and I think that might have been a surrender. Did they leave? No. Okay. All right. They just went ahead and let it go through. So Runa Regis is looking to take this one as Drapion is extremely low on health and energy and Nidoqueen really not going to have the best answer as Shadow Claw is just going to be tearing it down. They'll let this Earth Power through too or the Poison Fang, whatever it's going to be. It is going to be the Earth Power. Yeah, not taking too much damage right there. They can easily go for Sand Tombs, but Drapion decides to come in and throw one final crunch, but they're going to let this go. Or actually, Aqua Tail. They're going to go ahead and let this go. Come in with the Moltres and close this game out nicely. As they can easy, easily just farm down with fast moves and ancient power spam. So that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. Kind of funky right there. Swapping back into Giratina Altered in a situation where you know it has Shadow Ball. Um, and maybe they were just trying to call the double Sand Tomb. Um, but risking risking getting one shot, which is, is basically what happened right there And we're gonna see a brave bird. This is how you end a game right here going for the brave. Now. Hopefully this isn't stone edge No, it's just another poison fang. All right So they're gonna go ahead and end with the brave bird give us the booms that we want in this video We've had a couple blizzards now. We got a brave bird boom down goes the nidoqueen, queen and that is gonna be a good battle very well played All right Moving into the next one, we have Runerigus on the lead versus Tapu Fini once again. Another tough situation, but they're going to decide to stay in and maybe try to swap out like before. No, they're just going to go straight for Shadow Ball right here. But it is going to be CMP tie, so this Surf is going to get shielded. And let's see how the opponent reacts. They're in a good situation where they don't necessarily have to shield the Shadow Ball because the Tapu Fini is bulky enough to be able to tank it right here. So if they want shield advantage, they'll take it. Yeah, they decide to let that go. We will see the Tentacruel swap in and try to poison jab down. And now we see a Mandibus come in. Once again, another flying Pokemon coming into the Tentacruel right here. First, it was Drifblim. Now it is Mandibus, but Mandibus is thick in the ultra league it's extremely tanky but blizzard let's see what it can do right here is it gonna land we'll find out no it gets shielded so mandaba is correctly calling the charge move right there granted even if that was sludge wave mandaba is wanting to take control of switch advantage um and putting in the work right here to uh to just shield the sh uh, sludge wave instead of the blizzard but either way Looking pretty strong here for Tentacruel as they're going to go ahead and let the foul play go through and try to go for one last Blizzard. They do get to it in time. So Mandiba is knowing that it does have Blizzard. Is it going to shield? Yep. Decides to go for the double shields right here. So it's going to be up to Runerigus and the Moltres to take this one. And Moltres having that dark, added dark typing is really going to help out resisting the foul plays. But they're likely going to be going for Aerial Ace right here as it is going to be doing neutral damage. So this is still going to be a close one. Moltres is not the tankiest of Pokemon. And it's going to be able or it's going to be forced to throw Ancient Powers in order to get this Mandibuzz out of this mid game. Oh man, here comes another one. Still no shield. They want to keep the health or the shield for Runa Regis most likely to try to sweep as Mandibuzz might be the only counter to it. Um, even though Tapu Fini, right, does have Water Gun and Surf, with how much health it has left, the Runa Regis should be able to handle it. And yeah, the, the uh, Mandibuzz goes down. And we will... Oh, they are weak to Moltres in the back. So they're going to go ahead and go for an Ancient Power once again. What is the final Pokemon going to be? Scrafty? Be a Scrafty? No, it is going to be a Nidal Queen, so that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. Shadow Claw and Shadow Ball should be able to take this one as they can easily shield this first charge move. And it is just going to be... It is the Earth Power, actually. Okay, I thought they definitely would have gone for the bait right there. But Shadow Ball here and Shadow Claw should be able to take it. There's still a good amount of health left on Runa Regis. Um, and the Earth Power as well is not really going to one-shot. They go ahead and go for the Sand Tomb right away. Good call. Get that, um, well, it's still super effective damage, but get that debuff onto them so your uh, Shadow Claw can take it out. Yeah, they should be able to survive this Earth Power, and that will be a good battle. Very well played. So pretty interesting team right here. Not going to lie, I love seeing Runerigus put in work. 
Um, and love seeing the Tentacruel right there, having Blizzard. Definitely surprising a lot of opponents. And the Moltres as well. Always great to see the super spicy Pokemon come into this. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And like always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.